Okay, so this is Carrie Ann, and I am doing my um, group presentation on my final project proposal. So what I'm going to share with you guys is the Blackboard um, environment that I've started working on. Can everyone see that? Nope. No. Not yet. Your even your picture is just spinning. My picture is or, spinning. Where your, your picture should be, there's a little spinning circle. Okay. It's a buffer, uh, the buffer loader. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to go up here and try to share screens um, and see if I can do that. How about now? Can you see it now? Yes, I can. Okay. So. No. On my screen, it's still spinning, but I'm listening. Okay, I'm going to talk about it and let me know if it pops up. Okay, <laughs> so okay. my my course is called Eat, my course is called Eat Better by Cooking Better, and it is within the Blackboard um, environment. Um, you can see there I have the introduction. Um, basically, outside of work and professional life, um, eating well and cooking to eat well is a really um, pretty significant passion of mine and I really think that a lot of people don't eat well because they don't know how to cook well like they weren't taught how to cook well and so they see things in the grocery store that they don't know what they are and <laughs> the idea of cooking them or eating them is very overwhelming when the reality is uh, a lot of this stuff is really very straightforward and when you cook it at home it's actually really delicious and so much more economical than either consistently buying out or consistently buying pre-made food um, that may or may not have a ton of sodium in it or even some of those healthy quote unquote soups have a lot of sodium in it, that kind of thing. Um, and so you can see over here on the left that I have um, three different kind of units fleshed out a little bit. So we start with the um, food pyramid, which is now actually called the plate or my plate, um, how the federal government changed those um, kind of groups of food and the amount and um, portion sizes. And so here's an assignment um, that I want people to look at the website and then write down things they like and don't like. Um, and then an assignment to talk about their food history and to share it um, with each other, with the other classmates. Um, actually, I want to go back for a minute because the the um, the people that I'm targeting, my audience, is really anyone. It could be anyone, but I was specifically thinking about folks who may be lower income, um, folks who may have gotten themselves into a rut as far as eating bad food, junk food, fast food. Um, I did even hear just yesterday on TV, um, somebody was saying, it was a CNN report I was watching, and they said that this may be the first time in history that we do not have a caloric deficit, but we do have a nutritional deficit. So people are eating plenty of calories and some of them to their detriment are becoming obese, but they're not getting the nutrition that they need because what they're eating is not actually good food. So while this course could be designed for really anyone, I was definitely thinking about low income people, maybe even folks who are using food stamps to buy their food. So they definitely have a limited budget. Um, folks who struggle with the time to cook, um, folks who may have a lot of people that they cook for, and so they need to kind of expand everyone's palate so that people will eat um, a broader range of things and, and ideally things that are less expensive. Um, so we'll go back over here then to the course and you see that my second week is about do you have the time to eat? So this talks about um, looking at nutrition labels, thinking about your weekly schedule, thinking about when you have time to shop, when you have time to cook, when you have time to think about what you're going to shop for and cook. <laughs> like, you know, in this day and age, it sort of feels like we never have enough time. And so that's what this whole week talks about or this whole unit. And then the third week really talks about, okay, so now let's let's figure out what we're actually going to cook and we're going to move through a meal planner idea and think about what you know, you're going to cook for someone or multiple people and what do they want to eat? What do you feel comfortable cooking? 
um, and what can you do well with not a ton of stress, but it's definitely going to be, you know, a challenge. We don't want it to be make some minute rice and a can of beans. So, um, and so then I also have in here um, some videos that I've put in for people to watch. Um, that's not where it is. Um, to kind of show them some of the uh, website resources that are available um, and, you know, like cooking network, uh, food network and cooking channel, that kind of thing. Um, so that's kind of what I have so far. I would love your feedback or thoughts. Very impressive. Um, you know, you were mentioning that you're looking at it as for, you know, lower income. So maybe also create something about, you know, couponing and ways they can save money on buying the appropriate food. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then you said your target audience is, you know, you talked about people who have multiple mouths to feed and stuff like that. My right. first thought was, you know, I know when I lived by myself, I basically didn't want to go grocery shopping because it was just easier to go grab something. Yeah. You know, so, you know, for people who have cooking for one is really hard. So, you yep. know, maybe that's something like that. So I, I like your concept and, and ideas, definitely. No, those are both really great points, especially the cooking for one. It's uh, For me, it's been so long since I had to cook for one. I can't even remember that. So I definitely miss that. But um, yeah, that's a great idea to even talk about how you can make like a four person meal, but then put it in containers so you can take it to lunch the next day. Or you can eat it, you know, for dinner the day after that kind of thing. So thank you for that. And I used to do that a lot. I used to do that a lot at home. I would cook when I did feel like cooking is, you know, I would cook, because I'm used to cooking for a lot of people, so I would cook enough and then I have, you know, just subdivide it and put it in the freezer. Yep. But, yeah, a lot of times it was just so much easier to, you know, I work 12 hours a day just to grab something on the way home, so. Yep. I agree that that does create a nutritional deficiency. What about, um, Carrie Ann, the, the, the idea of so many people not cooking anymore? It, um, and I, I don't know if it's uh, time definitely factors in what I, I've noticed with a lot of younger people is they didn't learn how to cook from their mom or their dad didn't contribute so now they have no idea right how do, how do you go about um, impressing upon them hey there there's a different way than okay I'm, I'm passing the McDonald's let me stop here because next time I'm going to eat it it's a couple hours from now yeah, I think that, um, you know, it's a positive and a negative for the internet in general, right? Like everything you want is out there, but you sort of have to go get it. <laughs> so I think, you know, being available and being the type of resource that says, hey, like you were looking for information on learning how to cook. You, you would like to start thinking about maybe one day cooking for yourself. So like, here's some resources for you, you know? And um, if I were going to flesh this all the way out, I would definitely... I mean, there's so many out there on one hand cooking videos, like how to videos. Um, but I've done some very, very <laughs> low tech unprofessional for my 25 year old daughter and she saves them. And like when she wants to make pizza dough again, she pops up the video and she follows along, you know, so that kind of idea from someone who um, is not a professional chef, um, you know, may have some legs. I don't know. Um, but I do, I do agree with you, though, that a lot of this is that, that millennial group who um, their parents probably both worked and didn't have time to cook and definitely were like, come in here and watch me do this. They were like, go do your homework while I fix dinner and throw it on the table, you know? Right. <laughs> so. Right. Yeah. And there was another, another point that I, um, I, I really like the fact that you were going to do videos and links to other other places. I know uh, <laughs> this is just my own personal uh, story. Is I, I I'm 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 like no nothing. I contribute nothing to cooking other than preparation. <laughs> I can prep with the best of them. My wife actually kicked me out of the kitchen a long time ago. So uh, because I wanted to have my own food show. Ah, and, nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that, 
it's nice whenever you can cook, but when you have no clue what you're doing, you're just in the way. <laughs> um, just the, the fact that, that you have, you've incorporated, you know, um, different video clips and then also, hey, you, you can go to this website, get recipes and different things like that. It is, it kind of prevents you from saying, yeah, but I don't have enough. All of the resources are in one area. Right. So right. suck it up and keep going. And I also, I didn't show it to you, but there's definitely a video where I walk through um, four or five different websites. So like Cooking Light is one, if people are looking for healthier things, or, you know, Food Network is another. As, as you know, if you've been to that website, there's a million and one recipes and from, you know, A to Z as far as styles and tastes and flavors and all that on there. So there's just a lot of resources out there. And I guess maybe sometimes people get overwhelmed by how much is out there. And so I was thinking again of this person who, like Chris said, really never learned how to cook, but is looking maybe to save money, maybe to be more healthy for whatever reason, is looking for those kind of resources and trying to, you know, give them a first step into what's actually out there and available. My question I, I really is, like oh. presentation. Thanks. Go ahead, Steve. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my question was, uh, with time management, do you, do you provide any like time management uh, solutions in cooking? Like my my issue with cooking is it takes so much time to really prepare prepare a good meal. Do you have a uh, any like uh, how tos on having stuff preset so that you can put together a meal quickly? I think that's a really great insight. Um, the, the part that I have about time, let me just see if I can pull that back up again. Um, the part, oh, it's not that one, sorry. The, the unit that I have about time is more about people feeling like I don't have time to go to the grocery store, I don't have time to shop, that kind of thing. And so I really wanted people to think about um, you know, what are you actually doing during your day? Like, because I also feel like, and this may be the mother in me, but I feel like even though we all say we're so busy, we also kind of waste a lot of time. If you think about it, um, you know, we spend a lot of time flipping through emails on our phone and, you know, we spend a lot of time browsing the internet and that kind of stuff. And not everybody, but I think a lot of us do. And so, I wanted this to be an opportunity for people to look a little more critically at what they're actually doing with their time. And while I certainly wouldn't advocate, you know, driving during your commute and trying to make a grocery list, if you're riding the bus, you certainly can be spending that time making a grocery list, you know, or, yeah, or, or doing your coupon. Exactly. Or setting out a, a weekly um, menu, you know, Monday, I want to cook this Tuesday. I want to cook this. Now, what ingredients do I need for each one of those things? And so, um, I, I do think it's important for people to understand that creating that meal, like you said, Steve, does take time. But I think the key is going to be, and I, I definitely should add this, is let's talk about what order to do things in. So, for example, if you need a chopped onion and a chopped pepper and, you know, chopped celery, you can do that on Sunday and put those in little containers in your refrigerator. And then when you go Wednesday night to make meatloaf, you just pull those out. It's already chopped. You know, obviously you can't leave it in there for two weeks at a time, but you can definitely do it a couple days ahead when you have a little bit of downtime. And that makes the so actual weekly menus, weekly prep, yeah, everything ready. Exactly. Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what I do on the uh, when I when I make meal plans is I make I make I pre make a lot of stuff over the weekend and then uh, I'll either reheat or uh, I'll get them ready to be uh, prepared and ready for me to cook uh, yep. in the next couple of days. Yep. Perfect. When I'm not eating fatty like I am right now. <laughs> Sometimes you have to, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. So, Samina, are you back? Yay, but we can't hear you. <laughs> Did you want to type me any questions? Or are you good? Did you miss? Did you catch any of it? I think she's typing. Oh, okay. That's all right. Ming, any questions? 
no, I just want to make a comment. This is a really, really good idea to make a course. This is going to be awesome. So if you can make it multiple se- you know, episodes, the series, that would be wonderful. I really like the idea. <laughs> Thank you very much. Everyone wants to see what we're going to cook for yes. you later on. Yes. <laughs> more, more. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for your time, and uh, I'm going to stop the recording now.